Why? Why? Yeah, I was just in the back 40 here, you know, kind of <laughs> looking over the, the grounds. This is kind of a museum. A lot of things here that cover a lot of people who have become friends, clients, and for whom I've been a mentor. That's a nice word, mentor. A lot of pictures on the wall of some of the students. And uh, these little dolls of some of the characters that I've done, Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, you know, memorabilia. This is the gold record that Stan Freeberg and I won for St. George and the Dragonette 20 years ago, whatever plus, which is a nice thing to have. That was one of the first comedy records to sell over a million copies, about a million and a half, in about a month or a little more. That's nice to have. And, uh, oh, this, this is the, uh, uh, the, the thing I got, the Annie from the animation, National Animation Society. And that's quite a plum. So, I mean, June Foray has gotten one, Mel Blanc, me eventually. And uh, it's nice to have. Now, this is the coffee. You know, I have a workshop why I don't charge too much, and I have coffee and cookies and... Uh, and these are some more pictures. These are the commercial shots of actors and actresses. And uh, let's see. This is the little ice box for the Cokes. Uh, more pictures. This is my animal collection here I've had for years. Uh, I always liked animals. And some are bronzes, some are wood, some are harder materials. Some are quite valuable, some are just nice little animals, but it's a wonderful collection and at, at some time it could be worth an awful lot of money. I'm not concerned with that now because I enjoy having it. And uh, this is kind of interesting, not this particular one, this is a puppet that nobody's ever seen, but in working with students sometimes, uh, the hardest thing to do is to get them to relate, to listen, and they talk too fast. This is, this is like a disease, all actors or prospective actors fall into that trap. They want to show how good they can read. Whereas if you get something like this, it's like uh, putting a governor on your car, you know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Who's this chap? Hmm? Who's this chap? Oh, this, this chap here? That's, uh, that's, uh, Bill. Bill. Bill what? You've forgotten his name, haven't you? No, I haven't forgotten his name. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. What's his name? Quickly, quickly, what's his last name? Simpson! Simpson. <laughs> well, he locked out, you see. But you notice that I have to control my jaws because they have to coincide with his. He is moving his lips. He's not a ventriloquist. I don't know what you are, but you're not a ventriloquist. I am, uh, well, shall I tell him my name? Might as well. My name is Posh. I'm a very erudite, well-educated rabbit. And uh, <laughs> I'm sort of the head man. There's nothing else, you see, just a head man. That's enough. You've done enough. That's enough. But that's just an example of the things we try to do in here. And uh, let's go in the other room here. You can get around. Upstairs are a couple bedrooms and kind of mundane things. Bathroom. <laughs> and this is the studio. Uh, I have a lot of microphones. This is a, what they call the 44... 44B, which goes back to the great days of radio dramatization. There's a 77, which is the same unit. It has a, a ribbon inside, which gives very good sound. And a little Stennheiser over here, which is more of the modern small type of microphone. And a, a spillover of books. I have a lot of books in there, a lot of records. All of these containers, I don't know how much each one holds, but they're classical records, and they go from the A's to the Z's, and you know, really, really nice, all of the Mozart sonatas and Beethoven and Schubert and whatever. And uh, overflow of uh, videotapes. <laughs> Everybody ends up with too many that they never look at. And, uh, oh, this is something kind of interesting. This is me as a kid, about 17, 18 years old, doing a, a great English actor named George Arliss. And I was doing an impersonation of him in a picture. <laughs> uh, 
and the person that he was, I mean the person that he was at that time was about my age now. So I had to grow up to do it. But I was doing it when I was 18 years old. And it was a marvelous English character. You don't see him too much except on the Late Late Show. And this is the little studio where I have a Ampex and a mixer. and uh, a good turntable. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty well equipped. To, I can't do a lot of fancy things like a regular recording studio, overdubs and seven, eight tracks, 16, 30, whatever. But it serves the purpose and what I want to hear mainly is how people sound and how they read on a microphone. And to teach them some microphone technique, which is almost a lost art. I mean, now people wear a microphone on their, on their tie or whatever and they just talk. But the microphone as an instrument should be a viable and alive and a helpmate so that when you walk into a when you walk into a microphone and you talk like this and everything comes out as like silk and it's nice and it's very soft and you give no energy at all. And the microphone helps you. But so many people just talk like that in front of a microphone as if you're supposed to, like like the microphone expects it. So I try to clear up a lot of these misconceptions. I'm very egotistical, as you can see. <laughs> but it isn't me, it's things that I've learned over the years from very capable people. And uh, I guess that's about all in here. More records spilling over. <laughs> My old uh, IBM typewriter, I haven't gone for the modern ones because I like it. I'm used to it. and. Uh, and that's where I write my material. And if it's, it's been that good a companion up to this point, so why change it? Why, why turn it out into the cold, cold world, right? This is my cat, our cat. My wife, Mertis, and I have a cat. This lady, foxy lady. She was about that big when we got her, about that big. Now she's whoa, <laughs> pretty heavy. I'm going to get a saddle and ride on her instead of carrying her around anymore. And that's about it. Those are pictures of me over there when I was about 17, 18 years old doing impersonations. The way I started out in show business and nightclubs and so forth. And I wasn't even in the business then. That was just somebody in the neighborhood who had a camera, as you do, a still camera, took the pictures. And let's see, that's about it, I guess. There's a, that's about it. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a picture of uh, Charles Lawton up there. That's kind of interesting. My son works. My oldest son works for Shiat Day, a big agency, and they did a, a whole uh, program. Uh, you know, animated, not animated, but I mean commercials on TV about a fine photographer who had shot all the Life magazines in the old days, the great days of Life magazine. And there was one with Charles Lawton, and uh, he got that for me when they were through with the shoot. So it's quite a prize. And then all over the wall, as you can see, you may have taken that before, are characters that I've done for Hanna-Barbera. And that large one to your right in the middle of the room is one that my son and an associate at Hanna-Barbera did a couple of years ago as a Christmas present for me. I guess it took them several months to get all those cells painted and put them in a in a beautiful collection. And that represents, I'd say, a big part of the characters I've done over the last 20 years. There's Dr. Demento a little lower down with me. Very good interviewer. One of the best interviews I think I've ever had. It was for some new shows that Hannah Barbera was doing that included me. And that's about it, I guess. Out into the cold, cold world again. Nice to talk to you. You never did tell me your name. Well, I, I guess you never told me. I never asked you, did I? But I did not. What is your name? Well, maybe this is magic. The magic of Hollywood. <laughs> it just happened. I'll see you.